it was a bit of a snowy day for snowfall in Calgary. A little greasy out. Truck needs to be washed and cleaned up, but it's for when the weather gets nice again. As you can see, I cleaned up the case for the G56, cleaned up all the mating surfaces, painted it Cummins red here, and uh, I put a bit of a clear coat with a metallics sparkle fleck, give her some pizzazz. Put a couple new studs on for the slave that I had floating around. Some new hardware. Always does some well, some good. Um, yeah, so I got a couple things today, or not today, this week. Rock Auto came in on the, for some of these parts. Um, this here is the new input shaft. I didn't source a billet one. I found this, good deal, went with that. And then I had to swap the bearing over. So right here, you'll see this little sleeve. This sleeve aids in um, oiling the bearing. So that sleeve needs to come off. I, uh, I actually replaced the bearing. I had some issues getting the old one off, getting, a, getting the splitter in there. I got, I got it off and I went to reuse it. I put this, removed the, that sleeve and uh, removed it, cleaned it up installed it on the new shaft, used the convection oven and tried to get it at a decent temp. And this bearing, well, the old bearing just would not slide on. I tried another method, heating it up, got a little too hot, got it part way on, almost all the way. And, you know, just tried to use a punch around the inner race. And I put a chip in it and that was game over. Made a couple phone calls and Lord Co in town here actually had a uh, uh, SKF bearing that I could use and uh, it's a 32210 bearing. I gave them the Mopar number, they crossed it. Um, I got the Mopar number off Rock Auto. I find sometimes when you call in and you're like, hey, I got this G56 out of a three quarter ton Cummins and you're trying to explain it to them and they're kind of humming on it. It's easier if you just go on like Rock Auto. If you can source the part number or something they can cross, you're gonna have a way easier time. So once once that happened, I got the old bearing off that was part way on. I tried heating this one up again in the convection oven, and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna heat it a bit longer before I just had the bearing on the on the rack. I tried putting on like I've got a little cast iron pan. I tried to use doing it that way. Let it heat a bit. Put the shaft in the freezer, you know, so you have the heat to expand the bearing, bearing and the cold to kind of quench the shaft. Not that it's going to do much, but it didn't do what I needed it to do. So I went on to taking the old bearing and I cut the outer race and the cage off. And then, as you can see, I chamfered it. The reason why I tried to bevel it a little bit, and it's not great. Like I, yeah, it's uh, it's hacked at, at best. But as far as what I needed it to do, is not get caught on that sleeve. And then I got a pipe, put it into the 50-ton press at work, hit the pedal, and I had that bearing sleeve within two seconds. Maybe not quite two seconds, but um, that was the way to go. So um, work smart not hard so the the bearing was just it was a pain it, it really was i didn't think i'd have that much trouble you know i thought i'd drop it on after heating up and should go right in but um not not so lucky on the back side is this little it's not really a it is a seal but it's not like a seal that has a retaining spring or anything like that um I had a hard time trying to find one, so I was just very delicate when I removed it off the old shaft, and uh, I, I cautiously put it on, and we uh, worked quite well. So there you have it. That's, uh, that's it back together, and she's ready to go into the transmission. So um, the old input shaft, reason why, one of these things is not like the other. You can see that groove going in. What I suspect is a clutch disc hanging up or not sitting quite right and causing that groove there. And then when you go up, 
you can catch your nail on that with a pilot bearing road. So those two things right there, even if it had one of them, I would have got rid of it. This one is a little more, hmm, but you know what? I got the transmission apart. Do it once and do it right. So that's kind of my thought on it. Um, I went through, replaced the seals. And with those seals, uh, I got the four wheel drive seal in. I put a new input seal in. Um, the four wheel drive seal is a bit thicker than say the two wheel drive seal. The two wheel drive seal is a lot thinner. And if you look at spindle or yoke or whatever you want to call this from the two wheel drive, you can see why it's just a bit thicker for that old seal. So that's uh, kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, planning on getting transmission back together. I picked up some of the uh, right stuff, black silicone. I I like that stuff. It seems to work good. That's what I'm going to do to seal the, the case halves together in the PTO cupboards that I did in a matte silver. If it was a bit shinier, we could call it Saskatchewan Chrome. Um, but yeah, I think that contrast will look good. You see some guys and they put these big billet halves on and uh and then these uh these will stick out a bit further and you can hold a little bit more oil for cooling in i'm not going that route because then i gotta source those i just i'm gonna get this thing together and see what happens um got the other another shipment south bend clutch it's the sdd 3250-gx that is uh the half organic half um ceramic i read really good things part of the th reason is it can hold more power i don't, i it's rated for 650 horsepower and 1300 foot pounds of torque that is kind of where i'm going to end up or would like to end up for for now and see how it goes you know i didn't want anything too too crazy and from the reviews i read it seemed pretty good comes with the hydros um so new master new slave it has it's already pre-bled from south plan with the reservoir <laughs> like what an awesome setup to uh to install i i think like messing around bleeding if you bled masters for clutches and slaves i would spend double just to have one that's bled 100 percent. so i'm super stoked on that i haven't opened up the clutch but it is i think it's a clutch it weighs a lot so i'm uh I'm really happy with where we're at with the progress of this. I do have some parts still on order as far as for the interior of the truck. I have a couple things. I'm still trying to find the jump seat um, from a wrecker, but I'm not coming up with anything on a Laramie package. So I'm, I'm going to check a little bit online, see if a guy would uh, want to swap my console for... Uh, swap my console for maybe... Maybe the jump seat that he has. A lot of people would rather have the console, but I'm uh, making progress. And uh, once I get the all the shift boots and stuff, I think I'm gonna be starting to and get this back together. I think I'm I'm about ready to uh, pull the trigger and drop the 68 RFE and say so long.